It's Colorado Appeals Court 2-1 to one, says judge went too far in authorizing continuous monitoring of man's devices. You have Judge Timothy J. Schutz. <clears throat> Timothy J. Schutz speaks during the... A Weld County judge mistakenly upheld a requirement that a defendant subject himself to ongoing monitoring of his keystrokes and data, including conversations with his attorneys as part of his probation, Colorado's second highest court ruled on Thursday. Yeah, that is a lot of fucking, nope, every keystroke and data, every like on Facebook, every goddamn a three judge panel for the Court of Appeals decided two to one that District Court Judge Vincente G. Vigil neglected to analyze whether continuous surveillance of Justin Daniel Silvanic's electronic devices was the least least restrictive method of ensuring Silvanic's compliance with his sex or offender probation. Okay, sex offender probation, that's interesting. While the panel's majority did not bar Vigil from reimposing the continuous electronic monitoring if he ultimately deems it necessary, he probably shouldn't even have a computer. Judge, Judge Timothy J. Uh, Timothy J. Schutz did not mince words about the invasiveness of the proposed condition. The breadth of the monitoring agreement is remarkable. He wrote in the panel's February 16th opinion: "Constant, ongoing monitoring may be most administratively convenient to the probation department, but it does not equate to reasonable suspicion." Judge Matthew D. Grove disagreed. Sylvanic's probationary terms already allowed his probation officer to search his devices and receive information about Sylvanic's online accounts. Grove pointed out he believed the online surveillance amounted to an incremental difference from the other restrictions. Indeed, the court's decision to lift the outright ban on certain types of internet usage and instead permit monitoring was the less restrictive alternative, Grove wrote. Prosecutors charged Silvanic with sexual assault on a child, alleged, alleged he repeatedly contacted a friend's teenage daughter by text message. He eventually persuaded the girl to exchange sexual photos, which culminated in an apparent sexual encounter in the girl's bedroom. Silvanic agreed to plead guilty. At his sentencing hearing, he tried to shift the blame to his victim and her parents, while Silvanic's equivocation concerning vigil the judge sentenced him to 10 years on intensive supervised sex offender probation. Sylvanic challenged some of the probationary conditions, specifically those severely restricting or foreclosing his use of internet-capable devices. Vigil consented to modify the terms, and the final agreement stipulated that Sylvanic's probation officer or others could search his devices when there were reasonable grounds. Also, Sylvanic had to turn over his virtual account information and could not could not delete his online history. Shortly afterward, in the summer of 2020, Sylvanic's probation officer ordered him to pay for and enroll in an electronic monitoring program. A third-party vendor would be allowed to view Sylvanic's messages, call logs, multimedia, keystrokes, and sensitive information, such as passwords and conversations with attorneys. The information could, in turn, go to Sylvanic's supervision team. Sylvanic objected to the ongoing surveillance, claiming it did not align with his probationary terms, violated his Fourth Amendment right against unreasonable, but Vigil upheld the need for continuous monitoring, reasoning that Sylvanic was at a higher risk of attempting to cover up and minimize illicit behavior. The Court of Appeals panel subsequently examined whether Vigil properly allowed for the monitoring under Colorado law and under the Fourth Amendment. Shoots in the majority opinion noted pro- Bationers have a significantly diminished expectation of privacy and the legislature has authorized severe restrictions on their activities. Nonetheless, the Colorado Supreme Court has directed probation terms to be related to a defendant's rehabilitation and judges must consider whether less restrictive options are available when constitutional rights are implicated. Shoots writing for himself and Judge Dennis A. Graham concluded the continuous monitoring was not authorized by the original terms of Sylvanic's probation and appeared instead to be a matter of convenience for his probation officer. The agreement gives the government unfettered access to Sylvanic's private matters such as his medical portals, his places of worship, data related to any financial support he may provide to political organizations, the newspapers to which he subscribes and reads online, and severely restricts Sylvanic's ability to communicate with his family and attorney 
confidentially, Schutz wrote. While it's true that Sylvanic had relied on electronic devices to gain access to his victim, the government could not cite that fact alone to institute continuous online surveillance that would capture significant information about Sylvanic. Rather, the district court must determine what the legitimate safety concerns are and if there are less intrusive means of monitoring or searching that would adequately address those concerns, Schutz explained. The majority did not address Sylvanic's Fourth Amendment concern, leaving those for vigil to evaluate going forward. Grove, writing in dissent, did not believe the keystroke in data monitoring was a bridge too far considering Sylvanic had already agreed to turn over his account information to his probation officer, who could in turn view Sylvanic's online activity under the circ circumstances here, which involved grooming behavior using internet-related communications technology, a lack of accountability on Sylvanic's part and indications in the pre-sentence report that he had difficulties with impulse control, Grove argued any impingement on Sylvanic's Fourth Amendment, I hate the word impingement, it'd be infringement, impingement, hey, quit impinging me. Fourth Amendment rights is substantially outweighed by the government's interest in ensuring his compliance with the terms and conditions of his probation. The case is People v. Sylvanic. People v. Sylvanic. Here's a picture. It's not really three judges. It looks like there's five guys here. I'm not sure who any of these guys are.